Hello everyone, today I would like to go back to the basic and I would like to talk about control net. Most of the times I made videos assuming that you already know what control net is and how to actually use it within stable diffusion. But given that I received a lot of questions, maybe I thought, well, I can make a video. So today I want to talk about what control net is, how many models, control net models available we have and how to use them within stable diffusion. First of all, control net is a model which allows you to control your diffusion model, which is stable diffusion, when generating an image. What does it mean? It means that we can generate an image based on some conditioning. And this conditioning can be a specific pose, can be a specific facial expression, or it can be a sketch. And depending on what output we want to generate, we need to use different control models. And sometimes we can use more than one. When talking about stable diffusion, I always find very useful to go through the documentation, the paper, GitHub pages for reading all about it. And I find the control net paper being very, very useful and also the GitHub page. We are going to have a look at them together. But mainly if we go through the, this paper, which is adding conditional control to text to image diffusion models. Scrolling down, we can see that we have different examples of different control net models and how they are used. Now, let's first have a look on how many control net models we have available, or at least we are having a look at the most important ones. The first one is Scanny. It's going to detect the edges of an image and then it's going to use this mask. Let's, use, let's call it mask as an input for our diffusion model to generate another picture, which is based on these edges. This is Scribble. With Scribble, we can transform sketches of an image into something realistic or anime or whatever you would like to. This is open pose. With open pose, we are going to detect the pose of some person and we are going to reproduce another person in exactly the same pose. Another very useful is depth. With depth, we can control the depth of an image. So for example, if you have a picture of two persons and one person is closer to the camera whilst the other one is back in background, with depth, you're going to detect that. So with depth, you are going to create a grayscale image where black represent deeper areas in an image while white are less deep areas in an image. Very similar to Kenny, you have soft edge or HED edge detection. And with this, we are going to create soft edges of an image. We then have MLST, which stands for Mobile Line Segment Detection. And this is very useful for interior design or uh, buildings, so more architectural stuff. Very similar to the depth map, we have the normal map, with which we are going to detect the light inside the image. Usually the normal map is very good when you need to isolate a main subject or object from the background. With the segmentation map, we are going to detect what type of objects or subjects we have in an image. So you're going to see different colors for different objects. Line art. Line art is quite useful. It's very similar to Kenny. And sometimes I find it even better, depending if you want something exactly like the reference image, I will go for line art probably. It's quite useful mainly for anime pictures. You can download all of these models from Aginface, the, you know, the official ones, but around there are also other different type of control net models. Now let's have a look on how to use it in stable diffusion. Control net is available in almost all of the extensions within stable diffusion. The most important uh, obviously tab is text to image, but you have it also on image to image, the forum, text to video, and so on and so forth. And we usually find it at the bottom of the tab. So you have it here, this, you know, little tab you can open called control net. By default, you have, I think, one or two control net, but you can add multiple control net if you want. You just need to go into settings, control net, and here you can increase the number of models you want to use. I have four, for now it's fine. When you change these settings, you always need to apply settings and reload UI. Let's have a look at control net now. So for now, let's use just one control net unit. We need to drop an image. So we have two types of image we can drop inside this little window. One is a pre-processed image and one is a not pre-processed image. Let's have a look at this example. On the left side, we have the not pre-processed image. 
while on the right side we have a pre-processed image with open pose. Now, what's the difference here? It's quite obvious, right? So in the first case, we have an actual image. In the second case, we just have a mask. So in the case we use the first image, we then need to use a preprocessor for creating the mask. So for creating exactly this picture, picture number two, the mask. In the second case, we don't need to use any preprocessor. We just need to use a control net model. So let's assume we want to input inside control net the first image. In this case, when we are going to choose our settings, we actually need to choose the preprocessor because we need to transform this image into the mask we've seen before. We can use different preprocessors and in order to create the, exactly the same mask as before, which was an open post mask, we need to use our open post preprocessor. So in my case, I'm going to use open pose. And then we need to choose the model for creating the image, which obviously will be open pose because we are using an open pose mask. Now let's go back. Let me remove this image now. I'll go back to known and known. Now I'm going to drop the mask. In this case, I have the mask already. The image doesn't have to be pre-processed. We don't need a preprocessor. So here we can leave known. The only thing we need to choose will be the model, which in this case, because I we said that we want to use the open post, right? So in this case will be open post. You can get the mask from this website. I find it very useful. It's called posmy.art and they have plenty of free poses. So if you go into open post my art, You can see you have the model, well, in this case, uh, it's a man. And if you click on it, you can change many things. So you can, you see, you can change the perspective. You can change the position of the arms. It takes a little bit of time of do, for, for doing it, obviously, but I find it really, really useful. And if you go into here, pre-made scenes, you can see that there are different poses you can actually use. So for example, let's, Take this one, right? Now, if you go into export, you can decide the size or the resolution of the image you want of the mask or the image you want to export. So in this case, it's 512 by 512. You can also zoom in and zoom out, which is great. Let's assume I'm happy with this. So after that, we can export the depth image. We can export the open pose without hands, with hands. We can export Kenny and we can export the image. So let's have a look at what I just exported now. You can see here Kenny. You can see open pose with our hands. Open pose with hands. This is the depth. Obviously this is very useful when you want to create some customized positions. So given that I just downloaded this, let's use these uh, pictures. I'm going to use open pose. So when we use control net, the first thing we need to do is to enable control net. This is required. Otherwise, control net is not going to work. So make sure that this enable checkbox is ticked. Afterwards, we need to choose the preprocessor and model, right? So the preprocessor in this case has to be known because I have already used as an input the mask. I need to use open pose as the model. And then control net weight gives more or less weight to control net. So the less the control net weight, the less the people in the final image will have that position. Usually one is perfect. Maybe we can try with different options and see the difference. Then another useful setting is control mode. This is a relatively new setting. Uh, not that new, but newer than the rest of control net. Uh, you have balance, you have my print is more important and control net is more important. Depending on what you choose, you will have different results. And you can see in the main GitHub guide, you can see the difference between using one of the others. Now let's talk about dimensions. If you want to use the dimension of the control net image input, you can press this little button here and it's going to send the dimension in here. Now, obviously you don't see any change because I have the same dimensions already. But for example, if I change this to 1,500 and I press this, you will see that this goes back to 512 by 512 because we are considering for our output image, the 
resolution of the control net input. Now, before starting uh, looking at all of the different outputs, let's, let's create a prompt. Now, for this example, I'm going to use realistic vision. I copy the generation data from this picture and I paste it into my stable diffusion. And then I press this little button for adjusting all of the settings depending on that generation data. Now, we need to change a little bit the, the prompt description. We can maybe remove all of that and we can write something very simple, a man and a woman smiling happy. I'm going to use a random seed. Now, having used realistic vision generation data, this has changed, the dimension of my output has changed. So I'm going to click on this little arrow again so that I have 512 by 512 and I press generate. Let's see just using open pose what happens. And that's the image I'm getting. Obviously, faces are a little bit distorted, but this is because we need to use an upscaler or we need to use a detailer, which will help improving faces and hands as well. But open pose is working pretty well. As you can see, these two person are in the exact same position as the open pose mask. Now, I want to see how things change if we change the control net settings, right? So I can take this seed here and let's reduce the control net weight to 0 0.2. And you can see that it seems like control net has not been used at all in this case. Maybe 0 0.2 is too low, right? But maybe when it's used in combination with other control nets, we will get something slightly better, right? But if you're using only one control net unit, I would not recommend to use a low control net weight. Otherwise, you're not going to get anything closer to the mask. And this is the result when using different control net weights. It really seems that from 0 0.3, it's assuming the same position as our mask, but below it's not really great. Let's now work with the starting control net step and ending control net step. These two settings are just telling the model when to start using control net, which step, and when to stop using control net. It's not very easy to understand how they work, to be honest, but I usually find that between zero and one, it's, it's great. If we are using not many steps. So for example, if we are stopping control net too soon, then we are not going to get good results. And the same is when you're starting too late. So when you're using just a, a few steps. This obviously depends on the mask you're using. And in this case, it seems that if you're starting control net too late, control net is not working very well. But if we are ending control net beforehand, it seems to be working interesting result. So now let's assume that the generated output dimension, in this case I've chosen 1000 by 512, is different from the mask which is 512 by 512. We use cropped and resize here and let's see what happens. Oh, it looks like the image is cropped badly, right? So let's try with just resize. Not amazing result again. Let's now change it to resize and fill. So this will be the good one to use if you want to maintain your control net structure, right? Because it's just going to resize and adjust your mask depending on the output you want. So yeah, definitely this is the best one. Now I want to show you that if we use an image instead of the mask in control net, Maybe we can use this image we just generated. And we use a preprocessor. We are going to get the same result or similar result. So let's drop this image now. So in this case, I leave the settings as they are, but I'm going to use a preprocessor, which will be open pose. I'm going to go back to 512 by 512. And I'm going to press generate. And here you can see the result, right? So this is the final image we have generated. And then if you go to the right, you will see the mask that we have generated. And as you can see, it's similar, if not exactly the same as the one we used before. And indeed, the, the result is pretty similar as well. Now, as you can see, the, the picture that I picked before from Post My Art is slightly different compared to the picture we generated. 
And this is because we probably need to use other masks or other images, other conditioning to the model in order to get this exact position. That's why now I'm going to use depth in combination to open pose. So I'm going into control net unit number one. I'm going to choose my depth mask. This is already a mask. So I don't need the preprocessor, but I just need the model, which in this case will be depth. I'm going to leave control net mode as balanced. I'm, I'm happy with that. And I'm going to leave all of the other settings as they are. So now we are using two control net units, right? We have open push and depth. So this is the result. Um, not really expected like that, but so when we are using this kind of, uh, you know, depth images, the mask, uh, the, the downside of using them is that these type of models are not wearing anything. So when we use the mask, it's just looking at the shape of the body. And so most of the time we can get, you know, naked or half naked people. Maybe we can fix this by giving less control weight to control net in this case. So just for control unit number one, or for saying my prompt is more important. Let's try a combination of both. So maybe we can reduce this to 0.6 and I use my prompt is more important. Maybe we can add here night and bikini, and we can add in the positive prompt what we actually want to see, which maybe can be a man and a woman wearing elegant clothes. And let's generate. And this is better, right? Because we have two people in the position we were expecting. Now the light is a bit bad though. Maybe I will remove dark shot and dramatic lighting. This is not bad. This is actually very nice, I think. I'm still using the same seed as before, obviously. And I'm going to adjust the faces because I cannot really see these faces. So. For doing so, I'm going to use the A detailer. So let's enable it. I'm going to use face YOLO and I'm going to leave the other settings as they are. For who doesn't know, A detailer is very useful for improving faces and hands. It, it's a model for detecting and recognizing objects in, a, in an image. So in this case, we recognize faces and then we'll adjust the, the face. Yeah, it's great. Looks way better now. Also, we can improve this hand, still using a detailer. We have this second tab in here, which is not now, but we can use hand. And here you go, it's way better. Hands are better, the face are better, and the picture overall is great, I think. I'm pretty happy with that. And that's it really. So you can now hopefully play with different continent models uh, depending on your needs. I've showed you today how to use open pose and depth using Pose My Art. Pose My Heart has a vast collection of poses, including couples, fighting, and dance, and you can play around with models and the scene to create what you actually need. I find it super useful and really fun. If you want to know more about Scribbles, I have a video. The link should appear now somewhere. And, um, and yeah, hopefully this was useful. I hope you have more insights uh, uh, about ControlNet now and you can play around with that a little bit more. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.